Um, gentlemen, while I'm talking, or ladies and gentlemen, while I'm talking, I would appreciate if you could look at the slide. Um, and I think the most important part of the slide is the right-hand side. In other words, you see um, imports of 4.9 million uh, tons uh, going up to 2028 to 7 million tons. Um, in other words, not only an increase of 2.1 million tons, but let's say what's important is the deficit in North America of, let's say today, 5 million tons going up to 7 million tons. Um, the first question that um, one has to ask oneself is, can the farmer afford fertilizers? Well, um, it depends on weather, it depends on yields, it depends on crop prices. In 2015 to 2020, your average corn prices were approximately, I'm talking US dollars here, $3.60 a bushel. 2021, last year, we saw an increase of fertilizer prices and also an increase of corn prices to $5, US dollars 70 per bushel. All of a sudden, we see a corn price of US dollars 760 to 770. And let's not forget what will happen to crop prices due to the disturbance of the Ukrainian crop um, output, which um, will happen because, I mean, the Ukraine's is um, supplies approximately 15 to 20 percent of the total let's say, global um, crop output. Remember 2008, um, you farmers um, did cut fertilizer input. Why? Because fertilizer prices just went too high. Remember, you were paying well over $1,000 for phosphate, US dollars, well over $1,000 um, for, for potash, and close to $1,000 or over $1,000 for urea. And a lot of you uh, basically cut potash and phosphate prices because you couldn't afford the input anymore. You weren't getting the crop prices that could basically afford those prices. So farm affordability fertilizers is one issue. The second issue is how much urea will a farmer buy? Not only in Canada, but in North America. Well, this of course depends on the corn ac acreage allocated. Um, we've seen um, the US, uh, US has allocated corn acres normally between 87 and 92 million acres. We expect this to go up in the next 10 years to 100 million acres. Next question the farmer has to ask himself or herself, will industrial demand affect prices? Well, our governments are forcing us to be environmentally, let's say, more conscious. The DEF um, is, is an issue. And we are being forced to use DEF in all diesel powered vehicles, especially in trucks. So the usage of DEF will double by 2027 from one to 2 million tons um, per annum. Supply factors. The next issue is, as anybody read, whether you're going to see any major expansion in the US or in North America over the next 10 years. I haven't seen it. Now, besides, let's say, tweaking or de-bottlenecking by CF Industries or by Coke or by OCI um, in North America, uh, where you have here and there a couple of hundred thousand tons, you don't see any major urea plant being. Um, next thing is, I think you all have noticed that Chinese exports have been affected. Why? because of carbon emissions, emissions, because most plants in China are powered by, um, by coal uh, and coal are making, uh, let's say cities in China uh, so polluted that people, um, that people can't really live in these cities. And basically what is urea? Urea is energy. In other words, energy transformed into a product. And the Chinese have got a deficit in energy and therefore, um, their, let's say five to six million metric tons that they used to export will be dwindled down to zero, if not become a major importer. America has been importing five million metric tons. And as we see here from the graph, it will be increased to seven million metric tons by the end of, 20, of the 2020s. The next issue, what let's say 
what is going to affect prices is growth. The global urea market has a growth of just under 2% per annum. That means we need an additional 23 million metric tons to be added to global supply by 2028. Um, logistics. Maybe, Derek, if you could um, pick, let's say, pick up the slide on Western Canada delivered uh, versus FOB NOLA. Now, 60% um, of the 5 million tons today imported into North America comes into New Orleans. Now, of course, uh, a lot of you are going to say, yeah, but we don't get all our urea um, from New Orleans. Uh, we get it from CF, uh, we get it from Sesferka or from Yara, uh, we get it from Coke, we get it from OCI, it's imported from just over the border. Yes, but the question is, what is the urea that you farmers are paying for? How is it priced? It's priced off New Orleans plus logistic costs and overheads and profit from New Orleans to Western Canada. And that, as you can see, the average is approximately um, between 130 and 160 Canadian dollars per metric ton. That's the average over the, that's the average spread over the last five, six years. So again, um, who is earning the money here? Are you farmers earning the money? This extra logistic cost? No, this goes into the pocket of, let's say, of the producer who is, let's say, nearest to you. Um, I would uh, bet you that very little urea is actually physically arriving in Western Canada from New Orleans, but it is priced off New Orleans. And that is, as far as I'm concerned, that is a bit scary. Great, Oliver. I think that was a, thank you, appreciate the summary on the uh, market dynamics. You know, what I've taken away from it is um, there's no, there's no end in sight to this import gap uh, in, in North America in particular. Um, we'll continue to see these logistical costs being in incorporated as part of the urea pricing that when it hits Western Canada. And the big one for me is, um, or the big two are, you know, the, the reduction of supply uh, as a result of uh, coal-based energy being used to produce urea and as it relates to the carbon emission and protocols. And of course, the uncertainty around urea supply coming out of uh, uh, Russia over the course of the next little while, uh, all playing a very critical role uh, in why it makes sense to, um, to produce and build a facility in Western Canada. Uh, and of course, the last piece is just related to where we're at right here, which is on the natural gas pricing. Um, given the significant uh, cost component that natural gas plays in the operating costs of, of a facility, and we sit in a pretty a uh, pretty good market in Western Canada as it relates to supply and pricing. It only makes that added more sense uh, for us to look at building this facility in Western Canada.